WNBA is apparently back at it with their shenanigans, so let's get active. I've said this for a long time. It is 100% true. A good state championship caliber high school boys team would smoke the best team in the WNBA. I mean, you're not wrong. (laughs) For many sports fans, what Clay Travis said is nowhere near controversial, as Mm -hmm. it's an opinion based in sporting reality. Mm -hmm. But what do you know? Chelsea Gray, a WNBA player who plays for this year's WNBA champions, the Las Vegas Aces, well, she had a problem with the statement. I want problems, always! And responded to Travis by calling him a dumbass. Gray's response to Travis undoubtedly brought more problems to the already problem-riddled WNBA, as Travis doubled down in his response to her by offering to put up one million (laughs) dollars in a WNBA versus high school boys basketball. I'll put up a million dollars on the line, your WNBA champion team against a 2024 high school boys state champion team of my choice. You guys win, you get a million bucks of my money. My team wins, you all pay me a million and I give it to the boys high school team. You win. (laughs) <laughs> and he went back to Chelsea Gray. Here's the thing. If they were able to win, if she thinks that he's that much of a dumbass, then go and win, and you'll probably make more money that game than what you would ever make in your total WNBA career. This sounds like something that you should take on if you think he's a dumbass, right? Showdown. Unsurprisingly, Gray, the Aces, nor the WNBA have responded to Travis's offer. Of course. Seemingly aware of the reality of what would unfold in such a game. Well, damn. Nonetheless, this has left many sports fans, some that don't even care or watch basketball, very interested and willing to pay to watch this potential face-off. I'd watch it. And look, there have been other battle of the sexes in sports before that went, well, as expected. Such as a professional men's soccer team from the UK recently destroyed a U.S. women's team 12-0. to zero. Jarvis, there it is. Of course. Game over. 12 nothing. Wrexham defeats the U.S. women. Dang. Or a few years back when oh, the U.S. women's national soccer team played an under-15 boys side behind closed doors and lost. What's even more satisfying about that story that the U.S. women's pro team was unable to defeat a soccer club of 15-year-old-ish boys is that this one right here by the name of Megan Rapinoe is a starch feminist who is one of the leaders in this pro gender equality for pay movement and has said ridiculousness like this lack of investment and you you saw it and we brought it up before with the with the NCAA uh, women's March Madness tournament with a lack of proper investment um, we don't really know the real potential of women's sports what we know is how successful women's sports have been in the face of discrimination in the face of gender disparity in the face of a lack of investment on virtually every single level um, in comparison to men if you cannot beat a club of 15 year old boys then you should not be getting paid as much as grown ass men it's just not as exciting and it doesn't invite as many eyes to watch that kind of competition would you rather watch supercars race each other or would you rather watch Hyundai Sonatas race each other. But outside of the investment that you call for, how about this? Put women in those seats. If you put women in those seats, then there would be enough women supporting women to substantiate higher pay. But in a 1973 tennis match, Billie Jean King did defeat former Wimbledon champion and a very overly confident Bobby Riggs. Girls play a nice game of tennis for girls, but when they get out there on a court with a man, even a tired old man of 55, they're going to be in big trouble. The tennis match saw 90 million people worldwide tune in and is still considered one of the most watched televised sporting events of all time. In Mm. other words, an exhibition game between a WNBA team and a high school boys state championship team would be a massive marketing and financial opportunity for the WNBA and the players that take part in that game. As if you threw that game on pay-per-view, I I really think millions of people would tune in. The game would have too many underlying narratives for it not to draw impressive numbers. You know, it would draw those purely interested in the spectacle. It would draw people who wish to see two different genders compete against each other. It would draw yeah. both the supporter of the WNBA as well as all the haters Hater. of the WNBA. And, and that's what I think that they're scared of the WNBA. It's like if you want to be legitimized 
why would you accept an offer that essentially makes you into a circus act? I mean, it's just a spectacle at that point. It's no different than watching uh, YouTubers box. It's no different than watching maybe even like the NBA versus the Glo Globetrotters, right? Like it's, it's no difference. Folks would just want to watch it to get the short-term dopamine hit or the gratification of understanding that they were either right or that they were wrong, but it would delegitimize that association going into the future. And, and sure, some might argue that the WNBA would never do this as it's a lose-lose situation. Either the WNBA team loses to a high school team and gets ridiculed, or they beat the high school team and aren't given credit for it as they only beat high schoolers. High schoolers However, right. there are many possible wins in this for the WNBA. First, taking part in the game would probably earn that 12-woman roster more money in a single game than they might make their entire WNBA career if the game is on pay-per-view. Second, since most basketball fans understand the level of top high school boys, the WNBA team wouldn't even necessarily have to win. Just keeping the game close and competitive would be massively impressive and might increase respect to for sports the fans. Remember, before rule changes, players could go straight to the NBA from yeah. high school. Think Kobe, LeBron, KG, T Mac, and we've got to show some love to the Rain Man, Sean Kemp. The Rain Man! So oh. it's highly likely the WNBA team would be facing off against some players that have the talent to be in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Thus, a close loss is actually quite respectable. Lastly, this game would undoubtedly be the most watched game WNBA players have ever been a part of. Therefore, it would be the biggest marketing opportunity ever presented to the league. Absolutely. So actually, the only way the WNBA and its team loses in this scenario is if the high school team absolutely obliterates them. This fact makes the WNBA silence will. to this challenge deafening, as it reveals they, like everyone else knows, what's up. What's up? Right. And that's that they would absolutely get destroyed. Again, this is not meant to be disrespectful. It is just the a fact. truth. Right. Let's add some context to this debate by taking a look at the Mount Verde High School boys team. This is a school, by the way, that boasts alumni such as Joel Embiid, Ben Simmons, and D'Angelo Russell, just to name a few. Their current roster consists of center Derek Queen, the number 12 prospect in his class, coming in at 6'10", 240 pounds. God and damn. And power forward Asa Newell, the number 13 prospect in his class, coming in at 6'9", 205 pounds. At small forward, we have Cooper Flagg, the number one prospect in his class at 6'8", basically 200 pounds shooting guard so listen here's the thing too is even outside of the numbers that he's going over just look at the pure athleticism pounds at small forward we have these chicks are not catching alley oops i mean shit if they were a lot more people would be getting in them seats cooper flag the number one prospect in look at that his class easy six eight basically 200 can you imagine this sucker being listen i i, I, I didn't even think you need the top NBA, excuse me, the top high school boys team, I think you could go down to your local LA fitness and get some of the boys <laughs> that are playing five on fives full court to challenge some of these top WNBA teams. And that's just based off of sheer physicality, off of sheer strength, off of sheer endurance, off of sheer stamina. The thing is, is that the guys at the LA fitness may not have the technical skill set. They may not have the precision or the accuracy, maybe not even shoot as well. But if you put their body, their athleticism, their reaction time, the sizes of their hands and everything else that men biologically are better at than women. And you tell them boys to challenge the WNBA and if they win, they get a million dollars. Oh man, I would pay to even see that. pounds. Shooting guard, Liam McNeely, the number 15 prospect in his class, 6'7", almost 200 pounds. Then at point guard, we have the little Rob Wright, only the number 30 prospect oh. in his class, coming in at 6', oh. basically 170 Strong. pounds. Come on! If anyone thinks a WNBA team is winning against that high school boys team, no. in the words of a wise basketball oracle, they are delusional. And if someone wants to make the argument that Mount Verde isn't a state champion, 
champion as they only compete on a national level. It's ridiculous therefore argument. Therefore, wouldn't qualify to be Look a team this. in this situation. Okay, sure, but that's basically a cop out oh. and is admitting that some high school teams would indeed be WNBA teams, which is ultimately the point Travis and others are making. Right. And to stress again, that's fine, as males and females are different with different athletic capabilities, which is often reflected in other sports where adjustments are made because of this fact. Let's think of volleyball. But I digress. Yeah. Let's go ahead and look at another potential matchup for a WNBA squad. A Florida State champion from this past year, the Christopher Columbus basketball team. They boast a starting five of Cam Boozer, the second ranked prospect in his class who comes in at 6'9", 225 five pounds. Then Malik Abduhali, who is 6'8 and has committed to play D1 at Princeton. Next up, we got Caden Boozer, who is the 16th prospect in his class, who comes in at 6'5. To finish off the lineup, we got Angelo Miranda, who's coming in at 6'4, and Benny Fragella, who's coming in at 6'3. And a little fun fact, the Boozers on this team are the sons oh, the of son. former NBA okay. player Carlos Boozer. But anyway, if we really... Just real quick, I thought he made a fantastic point about how things are changed depending upon the sport. I believe in volleyball, they lower the net so that when they jump, they could be up higher. I think the same thing needs to happen in basketball. Why are they not lowering the rim for these women? It's so crazy is because these women want to fight for women's rights and think that it's fighting for rights to be equal to men and to have their standards judged the same as men. But that's not fighting for women's rights. You're fighting for women to be like men, but women are not like men. So change some of the standards specifically for them. I bet you any amount of money, you lower that rim to like nine and a half feet, you start to see these women, Vince Carter, East Bay and on chicks, ram and yamming it in. I guarantee you, you're gonna have way more tickets sold. So. What is the issue? Is it too many feminists on the board of directors in order to make changes to the game to make it a lot more interesting? Examine the matchup between the Las Vegas Aces and this Columbus squad. We'll see the boys would always have the majority of the tallest players on the court while always having the faster, stronger, higher jumping players in a sport where those attributes intersect and often Are necessary. matter in success. Right. You know, real talk, anyone hey. who thinks an undersized, less athletic w Gross. is beating that boy squad is probably on crack. But ultimately, <laughs> for the majority of sports fans who would die to see this matchup, It'd be there's funny. almost no chance we'll ever witness a WNBA team take on a high school wow. boy state champion. Nonetheless, oh. I stand firm in the opinions that it would bring in loads of money for the WNBA if done via pay-per-view, that it would be the biggest marketing opportunity the league has ever had, and that it could actually increase respect for the league if they were able to hold their own. However, if a game like this ever does happen, make the same bet as the UConn women's head coach, Gino Oriema. I'm going to go to the ATM. Bet all money. And I'm going to sell my house. Right. And I'm going to put all my money on the boys team. Absolutely. Anyway, thanks for watching. Fantastic video. I'm going to leave a link to this video down in the description box down below. Let me off, uh, finish off by saying this, is that, you know, for college, I was at a... Uh, I was at Penn State University. It was a D1 um, school. And I remember I befriended, for a couple of different reasons, some of the women that were on the basketball team. Actually, I had women friends that were on the track team, the basketball team. I got a thing for athletic women. Nevertheless, I, I remember it was the off season for one of the, uh, one of the girls' basketball teams. So often we go and play basketball with them, some three-on-three, -three, me and my boys and a couple of them, all right? We would always win. <laughs> like, these are demons. These chicks was big, too. So one of them was bigger than me. One was like 6'4", um, but the others were like 6'2", 6 foot. And the thing is, is that they had like, they had skill sets involved in the things that they were doing. You could tell that they played on a team together. They kind of knew where each other were going to be. Like, they were cut. They would know positioning. They would, But when it came to sheer strength and physicality, they couldn't handle us. I'd be like, yo, give me the ball. Whew. And I start, and I was skinnier at the time. I was probably like 175 pounds or something like that. Probably the same height at about 6'2". And I would just start slowly backing her ass down, and I'd fake up. She'd go up, and I'd just go up with the left hand. Simple, easy. And I remember thinking to myself, and this is from someone who's not watched women play basketball, but if this is the level of athleticism that D1 women's basketball athletes have, then no wonder why they either don't get paid as much or they're unable to fill up 
stadium seats. And what's crazy is I remember one time we went to the uh, one of the basketball centers that's on campus. There's a bunch of them up on Penn State's campus, at least at the time. I'm sure there is right now. And I remember we were doing a pickup game, and it was, again, it was off season, but for the football team. And it was this one football player. He wasn't even a starter, right? So we do a pickup game. He comes on. He wants to play. He was on the other team. And when I tell you that this kid, <laughs> like, there was nothing nobody could do. His rebounding, he was shorter than me. His rebounding ability, he was jumping out the park. He was one hand dunking from what looked like damn near the free throw line. Like the level of athleticism and the differences is just so wild. And I think that we're so brainwashed as a culture as to think that there's equality and athleticism, which then leads to some type of equality of putting asses in a seat, which then leads to some type of equality of pay. So when you take a look at this issue of gender pay gap, how smooth brain of a society that we live in today to say that this by some stretch means and imagination should be equal. I think a lot of the arguments that come from this topic are just strictly feelings based. I think the majority of women in the WNBA understand exactly why there's not equal pay, but I think they're feeling themselves into the argument and it's really underneath the guise of equality of outcome versus equality of opportunity. You guys have the opportunity to make as much money if you filled up as many people in those seats. If you go ask the average woman, name the top three WNBA players, they wouldn't know. Neither would the guys, for obvious reasons. But instead, their feelings make them want to judge things based off of equality of outcome. They look at the outcome of the NBA and they want the same exact outcome. And if anything goes against that, irrespective of the data, then they have a problem with it. And then they're sitting on the Senate room floor fighting for female rights because the patriarchy just keeps us down. No, ma'am, your biology keeps you down. Blame God if you want to blame anybody. He made y'all like that. He didn't make us like this. It's literally the team of Hyundai Sonatas arguing to the Association of Corvettes why their pay is not as, <laughs> as much. And it's absolutely insane and absolutely ridiculous. That's what I'll leave you guys here with today. Hopefully you enjoyed the content. Go give the original content a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon. Until next time, YouTube. Peace. Peace.